Hello, my name is Creed and welcome to Riders Blockbuster. I'm really excited because I get to show you Evil Dead 2 today. This movie serves as a bit of a retcon for the original, giving us a brief retelling of the story but then continuing right where the original left off. It's fun, funny, scary, and is a movie with so much character that it's impossible not to love. There will be spoilers ahead, so you've been warned, and if you enjoy horror movie breakdowns, then subscribe so that you don't miss out on the next one. We open to a narration about the Book of the Dead. It was written long ago and scripted entirely in blood, but one day, it disappeared. We then cut to see Ash and his girlfriend Linda driving to the cabin in the woods. This part of the story is streamlined quite a bit and has some significant retconning. Instead of the full group of friends, it's only Ash and Linda, and Ash is really suave and smooth, unlike in the original. They've snuck into this cabin, knowing that the owners are away on business. Linda is paranoid that they may come back at any moment, but Ash is nonchalant about the situation. What do you say we have some champagne, huh, baby? Huh? <laughs> sure. <laughs> After all, I'm a man and you're a woman. <laughs> Ash finds a tape recorder and plays the recording. It's from the professor that owns the cabin. He talks about finding something remarkable in ancient ruins that translated to the Book of the Dead. He took the book to his cabin so that he could translate it undisturbed. Directly next to the recorder is the book itself, and Ash picks it up to examine it. You looking at me? The recording continues and begins to phonetically read one of the passages. We see something outside get disturbed and stalk towards the cabin, and it shatters through Linda's window. Ash runs in to find Linda gone, and goes searching for her in the woods. She suddenly jumps up, but it's clear that she's possessed. When she leaps at Ash, he grabs a shovel and beheads her in one swipe. He gives her a burial, but keeps her necklace for remembrance. We then see the demonic force rush through the woods and into the cabin before attacking Ash. It picks him up and throws him through the air before he hits a tree, falling into a puddle and catching us up on all of the basics of the first film. Ash jumps out of the water screaming and possessed, but when he sees the sunlight, the demon inside him retreats and he returns to normal and passes out. When he wakes up, he realizes that the demons are gone and it must be due to the sunlight. He tries to drive off, but the bridge has been completely destroyed. No! No! The sun is beginning to go down, and Ash is chased back to the cabin. He tries to close the door on the demons that are chasing him, but they burst through each one and pursue him until he hides in the crawlspace and loses their sight. We then cut to the owners of the cabin, returning from a dig. We meet Annie and Ed, and learn that they have discovered more pages from the Book of the Dead, and they plan to begin translating them tonight, so they're heading to the cabin. Roar. Ash is hearing things all around him. The piano begins playing by itself, and he reaches into his pocket and stares at Linda's necklace to mourn. Boards on the window break, and when Ash looks out the window, he sees Linda's body rise from the grave. Her head rolls back onto her body as she dances and mocks him before disappearing into the woods. She suddenly appears right in front of him and grabs his head, knocking him into the boards over and over. Ash wakes up, and it seems like it's all just a dream, but was it? Linda's head falls from the ceiling and bites his hand. He does everything he can to get the head off, but nothing works. He runs out to the work shed and shoves it into a vice grip. He reaches for the chainsaw, but it's missing. Linda's body then busts down the door with the chainsaw in hand. Ash is able to fight her off, and he takes the weapon for himself and cuts through Linda's head, silencing her for good. Heading back into the cabin, Ash pulls a shotgun from off the wall and decides to take that over his chainsaw. He believes that he's going crazy and he stares into the mirror, trying to convince himself that he's fine. His reflection then jumps out and grabs him. We just cut up our girlfriend with a chainsaw. He looks down to see the bite wound on his hand radiate with black veins. His hand becomes completely possessed. <laughs> When Annie and Ed arrive to the bridge, they find that it's broken, so they won't be able to reach their cabin. A couple, named Jake and Bobby Joe, tell them that there's a trail that they can take, and they offer to lead them through it for a hundred bucks. Ash is getting completely wrecked by his own hand, 
It knocks him out cold and begins to drag him towards a meat cleaver. Just before it reaches the cleaver, Ash wakes up and stabs his hand. He then grabs his chainsaw and cuts off the possessed appendage and traps it inside of a can. But while he's wrapping up his stump, the hand escapes. He picks up his shotgun and searches around for the little bugger, but it escapes through a mouse hole. He hears it through the wall and takes a shot, nailing it. Blood begins to erupt from the walls, covering Ash before turning completely black and suddenly stopping. He falls to the ground, and then everything around him comes to life and begins laughing. Ash has officially lost it, and he joins in with the maniacal laughter. His laughs turn to screams, and then he hears something at the front door and instantly shoots. He opens the door, but nothing is there. As soon as he lets his guard down, Jake jumps onto him and they wrestle on the ground, but Ash is knocked unconscious. Annie wonders where her parents are, and when she sees the chainsaw covered in blood, she's certain that Ash killed them. They decide to throw him into the cellar until they can get the sheriff. Annie then plays the rest of the recording that Ash started earlier. Her father's voice plays, saying that his wife Henrietta was possessed by the demons and that she tried to kill him. The next day, she died and he dragged her down to the cellar and buried her. Ash hears this moments before Henrietta bursts from the cellar floor. Ash bangs on the trap door as the possessed corpse inches closer. The others open the door moments before he's grabbed, but Henrietta's demonic head juts out of the cellar and grabs Jake. Ash jumps onto the trapdoor, smashing the demon's head and causing the eye to pop out and fly directly into Bobby Joe's mouth. He and Jake are able to keep the door closed and chain it up. Ash tells the others all that he has discovered. They all want to leave, but he demands that they stay until daylight. They then hear Henrietta singing from the cellar, and when they look, they see that she has apparently returned to normal. Annie moves to unlock the door, but Ash stops her, knowing the demon's trick. Ed then jumps up, completely possessed. He floats around, and multiple voices come from his mouth and say that the demons want all of their lives, and they will all be dead by dawn. He throws Jake into the ceiling and knocks the man out. Ash then attacks the possessed man with an axe, chopping him into bits and spraying green blood all over the room. Things seem to quiet down after that, but Jake notices that the trail that they came in on is nowhere to be seen. The clock then stops, and they hear something bounce around the room, but they can't see what it is. A door creaks open, and Ash and Annie go in to check it out. Inside the room, a spiritual apparition appears, and Annie recognizes it as her father. He tells them that the demons want to take all of their souls and that the only way to stop them is with a passage in the new pages that Annie brought with her. Ash's hand comes back, grabbing onto Bobby Joe's hand, and it scares her so bad that she runs out of the cabin and into the woods. She gets the uh, Cheryl treatment from the original as the trees come to life and begin to bind her arms and legs. She's then dragged off of her feet and deeper into the woods at an insane speed. She crashes into a tree and is presumed to be dead. Jake wants to go out and find her, but Ash tells him that if she went into the woods, she is definitely dead, and if the others follow her, that they will die too. They read through the new pages, and Annie finds a prophecy of a man who fell from the sky a long time ago and was said to have destroyed the evil. Didn't do a very good job. They then find an incantation that will make the demonic form become physical and another one that will open a rift in time and space that they can use to shove the demon into. Jake clicks the shotgun and says that he's running the show now and that he wants to go out and find Bobby Joe. He takes the pages and shoves them into the cellar before forcing the other two to go out into the woods. Jake shouts for Bobby Joe and when Ash tries to shut him up, Jake knocks him to the ground. He continues shouting, and then Ash rises, once again possessed. The possessed man throws Jake into a tree and then chases Annie into the cabin. She's able to get the door closed on him and then she picks up a skeletal dagger to defend herself. She hears someone banging on the back door and when the door opens, she stabs. Unfortunately, it was only Jake, alive and unpossessed and now stabbed in the chest. 
Ash pops up in a window, and then he sees the door is open. Annie gets it closed just in time and screams while the possessed man bangs on that door. Annie rushes to Jake and pulls the dagger out before dragging him into the main room. She lays Jake down and picks up the axe, but these two just can't catch a break. Henrietta pops up from the cellar and drags Jake below. Annie tries to help, but it's no use as Jake is transformed into a geyser of blood. When she turns around, the possessed Ash picks her up and throws her against the wall. He wanders closer, ready to finish her off, but stops when he sees Linda's necklace laying on the floor. Ash cries out, seemingly defeating his possession. Annie picks the axe back up and tries to kill Ash, but he is able to get the axe out of her hand and screams at her that he's alright until eventually she believes him. They both know that the possession could start again at any time, so Annie says that they need to get the pages back from the cellar as soon as they can. Ash agrees, but he wants to arm up first. We then see him go into the shed and replace his lost hand with the prosthetic chainsaw. He then cuts the barrel of the shotgun down to size and is ready to rumble. Groovy. Ash cautiously enters the cellar, but hears the groans of Henrietta coming from a nearby room. They know that she must have taken a few of the pages, so they enter the room. Ash gets spooked when Jake's skeleton drops onto him, but otherwise, the room seems clear and he backs out with the pages in hand. He tosses them up to Annie, but on his way up, he's grabbed by Henrietta and dragged beneath the stairs. Annie begins to chant the incantation, but stops when Ash is thrown from the cellar. Henrietta jumps up a moment later and grabs Annie's hair. Ash then taunts the possessed woman, inviting her to try and kill him, and the two duke it out. Henrietta's neck elongates and her head transforms, and just as she's about to bite through Ash, Annie begins to sing the lullaby. This distracts the demon just long enough for Ash to get the upper hand and chop off her limbs. The head is still alive and taunts that it will swallow their souls. Swallow this. Ash and Annie then embrace as they think that they've won, but the walls of the cabin begin to shudder and we see that the trees have begun an assault. Annie says that she read the first of the passages, so the demons are now in the form of flesh. A huge demon then arrives at the front door, and when Ash looks at it, a strip of his hair turns white, showing us that this thing is deadly to even look at. As Annie is reading the final passage, Ash's possessed hand stabs her with the skeletal dagger. Ash is then grabbed by the giant demon, but Annie picks up the final page and reads, opening the rift moments before she dies. Ash's car gets sucked through the portal, and then the demon does as well. Everything goes quiet as Ash crawls to Annie, thanking her for stopping the demon. But the door is suddenly sucked off of its hinges, and we see that the portal is still open. Ash does his best to hold on to something, but eventually he's sucked into the portal as well. He flips through time and space until he and his car fall from the sky. He's surrounded by what appears to be knights and crusaders. They just about stab him, but are scared off when a flying monster arrives. Ash rises to his feet and shoots the creature's head clean off with his shotgun. All those around him stare at the man and begin to scream his praises, saying that he was a man prophesied to save them all from the deadites. Ash screams at the sky, and that is where this movie ends. I freaking love this movie, man. What can I say? Like, Bruce Campbell's wacky acting mixed with awesome practical effects and goofy characters is a recipe for pure and amazing entertainment. Like I said at the beginning, the movie itself has so much character just oozing from every moment. Everything from the camera angles, to the set pieces, to the literal geysers of blood just add to this movie as a whole and make it something truly special. I remember seeing this film for the first time and realizing that I had never seen anything like it and I was honestly blown away. When Ash fell from the sky at the end, and Soup told me that there was another film in the series that we got to watch, I was ecstatic. It was such a cool moment, discovering something so amazing had existed for my entire life that I hadn't been spoiled to, and it's something that has stuck with me, like, ever since. I definitely think that I prefer this film to the original, but it's honestly kind of a close call. 
The first one takes itself really seriously, and it's way more of a horror film than the second, but this one is brimming with insanity that's so over the top that I think, I think it barely wins for me. I don't want to spoil anything from the next film, but know that Army of Darkness is also just well, absolutely incredible. And I'll be covering that shortly, so keep an eye out for that one. If you enjoyed this breakdown, then don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on the next great film that we cover. But yeah, remember that if you chop off any of your possessed limbs, you are obligated to replace them with chainsaws. Bye-bye.